In this review we look at another crane in the colours of the red and black boys. It's a Grove 4100 L1 and it has memo model number 410285. Turning the box round we see there's a hologram so this is genuine Mammut merchandise and the model is made by Conrad. Let's begin by putting it on the Weybridge and it's £3.10 ounces, which in metrical speak is 1.66 kilograms. The box design is typical of what Conrad uses and the first thing to note is that there are no instructions for the model. If we lift the lid we can see the model packed inside but it's shown no respect for the camera by appearing upside down so we'll turn it around and one of the first things we see is a Mammut collector card. It has a unique serial number and it also tells us that 300 have been made. Next we use the giant hand crane to get the model out and with it there are quite a number of separate parts. As often with Conrad there's a moulding sprue with the mirrors attached and this one's a little odd because a couple of the mirrors do have silvered surfaces but two others don't. And it's not obvious why the manufacturing process can only silver some of the mirrors. The parts bag also has a separate unsilvered mirror. We'll begin by fixing mirrors to the cab and these big door mirrors fit into holes that are already preformed. But on this model they are too loose fitting and that means that they easily drop out. That can be a bit annoying and makes you want to punch your own head, so you just have to keep an eye on them. There's also a mirror that fits over the passenger side door, and that one has a much better fit, so it's not one that you have to keep refixing. There's also this big mirror which should fit over the front windscreen, but strangely there's no hole for it, so it's not really clear why it's been provided when there's no way of fitting it. The last mirror goes onto the crane and that has a decent fit so it stays in place. Four plastic outrigger pads are provided and these have to be fitted by clipping them onto the bottom of the pistons. This works quite well because they do stay in place. Next there are beacon light holders to fit at the rear and with this many parts to fit it is surprising that there are no instructions provided with this model. Next we can move on with dealing with the counterweight in transport mode and the counterweight is accurately modelled in all of its parts. It does look like it should fit under the boom in the middle of the carrier but in fact it doesn't fit properly. However looking at photos of the real crane it seems that the ballast plate is often carried at the back. Next we need to run some rope off of the winch drum and it's initially kept tidy with some black tape. This winch relies on friction and there's no key provided. We'll run the rope to the front so we can attach the hook. And one thing to note is there's no tying off point provided. So you need to improvise a tying off point. So here's the hook attached but there's nowhere to tie it on at the front of the crane. So to try and get a transport pose we've just used a short length of chain which is not provided. And tied it onto a cab step. Not perfect but it's the best we can do. The last bit of assembly to do is to attach the fly jib and if we want the model to carry a fly jib we have to fit two plastic brackets. These fit onto the side of the boom but on the review model the fit was not perfect and again they seem to get dislodged very easily. Once we've fitted them as best we can we can then land the fly jib and that essentially just hooks on and rests in place. With that the assembly is completed so let's put the crane onto the weighbridge and in road going configuration it's about £3 one ounce or just about 1.4 kilograms. Starting underneath and the model has a robust structure. And for a Conrad model there's enhanced detailing of the transmission and suspension. The big road tyres have a decent tread pattern. And moving to the carrier cab it looks very good. 
and the red and black decoration certainly helps. There is a number plate which looks like a UK plate, and there are nice chevrons on the front bumper. Side on there's some very nice detailing, and among the sharp graphics is a Mammut fleet number. There are some nice textured surfaces, and the big wheels also look very good with their highlighted red hubs. Moving to the back and there are some ladders moulded into the casting, and there are some detailed graphics on the crane body. Also nice are the grab rails which are made of metal. At the back there are a set of non-removable wheel chocks. And moving on to the crane boom there's a nice big spooling drum. And a nice touch is that it rotates. There's also a smaller drum which looks more plasticky. But it does have some grooving on the drum and that would look good if it was black. The lattice part of the fly jib is metal and the inside telescopic part is plastic. With the boom up we can see the detail on the carrier deck. And there are some nice textured surfaces and a modelled exhaust system. The main boom ram is very tough plastic and it's slightly off colour. The same is also true of the outriggers which have outer metal sections, but the tough plastic inner sections do look like plastic. The boom profile is very good but the innermost top section does get very thin, but it does have mammoth graphics. In terms of functionality, the front axles do have linked steering, and axles 3 and 4 are also linked with a better steering angle. But it's worth noting that on the real crane, axles 3 and 4 can be separately steered. The carrier has been modelled with working suspension, and that does perform well on the model. Unusually for Conrad, rolling the model is a little bit more temperamental, and that's really because on the review model, the front axle steering was not sufficiently stiff so it would not hold an angle. However, you can of course pose the model with various steering configurations, and that does include crab steering, so when you drive it along you can confuse your friends and family. Time to get set up and get the crane lifting, and as usual we'll pull out the outriggers first, and the pads are lowered by unscrewing the pistons, which have a nice smooth face. You can get the crane wheels free, but the outrigger beams are not perfectly straight. A nice touch is to raise the crane handrail from the transport position. And there's also a stepping plate which can be pulled out from underneath the cab. And good luck trying to do that with your fingernails. With the hook set free we can raise the boom. And there's very little friction because the boom is locked using a rotating collar at the top of the ram. A tool is provided but it's not the best system because you can't always feel sure that the ram is tightened fully. With the boom up we can rotate the crane and this was stiff on the review model. To fit the counterweight we need to remove it from the transport mode and then add the other parts which have been carried by separate transport. Once the full block is assembled we can offer it up and it clips on to the underside of the rear of the crane. Once you get used to how this works, it works well, and if you want to go to the max, there are small cheek weights that can be added. Extending the boom is done in the usual way, although some parts were very stiff on the review model. Only one locking clip is provided, and that was at the 100% extension. And if you want to lower the boom back down, you press in on the locking clip in the usual way, and that lets you carry on retracting that particular section and you repeat this process to fully retract the boom. Another feature is the tilting cab, and it easily holds a tilted angle. The last feature to look at is the fly jib, and we begin by disconnecting the rope where we tied it off, and then we add the fly jib to the boom head. The lower pins are moulded in, and the upper ones are Conrad's grey variety, and it works well enough. There's a small guide pulley to open up for the winch rope, and then you tie on the hook block, but really a single line hook would look better in this configuration. The fly jib does have some nice functionality, and the first is that you can set it at various offset angles. 
and that's continuously variable using the modelled hydraulic ram. It has a good stiffness to hold a pose, and you can also extend the length of the fly jib by pulling out the telescopic section, and you can pin it if you need to. Let's do a dim check on the model and fully extended. It's over 4 feet or 123 centimetres. And the fly jib adds another 14 inches or 35 centimetres if you want it. This is a good looking model by Conrad and as usual it's enhanced by the red and black colour scheme of Mammut. It has some very good detailing and there's plenty of functionality to enable the model to be displayed in different ways. Overall this is a nice looking limited edition which is rated as very good.